I, I kind of want to pick up where we left off last week. And last week we looked at a part of the creation story is found in Genesis. We looked at the creation of woman. And, and really the Bible tells us that in six days God created everything, including man and woman. But, but, but then the Bible goes on to say that on the seventh day, after God had created everything, on the seventh day God rested. God rested. I want to read to you from Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. It says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So as we learn in, in vacation Bible school, as we learn in Sunday school class, on the seventh day, on the seventh day God rested. I'm not sure if you've ever really thought about that before. But it says that God rested. And to be honest with you, for a, for a long time, I, I kind of had a problem with this idea that God rested. I mean, why would God need to rest? Was God so worn out from the first six days of creation that on the seventh day God needed to go to the far recesses of the universe and take a nap? Did God really need to rest? As the book of Genesis tells us? Well, here's the thing. In Hebrew, that word rest or rested, more than anything else, means to cease, to be at an end, to desist from. So basically, when it tells us that God rested, what it's saying is that on the seventh day, God stopped creating, that everything had been created. And personally, I kind of see it as, as what an, an, an artist does when they get done creating a piece of, uh, a piece of work or, or a masterpiece. You know, when the artist gets done painting or creating a sculpture or drawing a picture, they can put aside the tools of their craft, they can step back, and they can look and appreciate the masterpiece that they have created. And in my mind, that's what's going on here in Genesis. That on the seventh day, when God was done creating the universe, he kind of stepped back. He stopped what he was doing. And he stepped back, and he took 24 hours to appreciate that which, which he had created. And so in the Bible, when it tells us that, that God rested, it's not as if, you know, he went and reclined in some divine lazy boy. <laughs> or went somewhere really nice and, and took a nap in a hammock. Now what the scripture is telling us is that on the seventh day, God stopped creating the, uni uh, the universe, stepped back, looked upon the universe, said that it was good, and really took in and appreciated all that he had done. He gazed at, at the beauty, at the beauty of his creation. But when we try to apply that for our lives, practically speaking, I mean, what, what does that mean for us? What does it mean that on, for us that on the seventh day God rested? Well, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, we are told, as followers of God, we are told to remember the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week. For us, it's Saturday. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Now again, the seventh day is Saturday. It's the last day of the week. It's the day that, uh, that God rested, and for the Jewish people, that's their Sabbath day. Now for us as Christians, we usually take our Sabbath day, traditionally we take our Sabbath day on Sunday. Because the New Testament tells us that when Jesus Christ arose from the dead, that it was on the first day of the week. That with Jesus' resurrection, God blessed, God made holy the, the first day of the week because that's the day upon which Jesus Christ arose from the dead. So for many Christians, for many followers of Christ, this, this is the day, Sunday, the first day of the week, this is the day upon which we celebrate the Sabbath. But regardless of when you celebrate it, and there are some who still celebrate it on Saturday, but regardless of when you celebrate it, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, I think the key here is to keep it holy. 
Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Now what does that mean? What does it mean for our lives to keep the Sabbath day holy? First of all, and I've mentioned this before, and I'll continue to mention this because I think it's important, but in Hebrew that word holy or holiness simply means to be set apart. And so for us to have a Sabbath day, it means that we set apart a segment of time. We set apart a day, we set apart part of a day and devote it to God. That's what it means to keep the, the Sabbath the day holy first and foremost. It means that we set apart a portion of our week for God. Psalm 46.10 tells us, be still, be still and know that I am God. And so we are called to separate ourselves from the busyness of the world. We're to, we're to uh, separate ourselves from the busyness of our normal work week. And we're called to, to set apart this time devoted to God where we can be still and appreciate all that God has done for us. So first and foremost, to keep the Sabbath day by, by, by keeping it holy means that you, that you have a segment of time that you set apart for God. A, a, a period of time in which you can appreciate all that God has done for you. A second way in which we keep the Sabbath day holy, according to the scriptures, uh, we keep it holy by, by treating other people well. We keep the Sabbath day holy by treating other people well. It's a, the Sabbath day is a reminder not to exploit others. In Exodus chapter 23, verse 12, verse 12 we read, Six days do your work, but on the seventh day do not work so that your ox and your donkey may rest, and the slave born in your household, and the alien as well may be refreshed. And so this was a reminder for the Israelites to keep, to keep um, other people refreshed. It was a reminder not to exploit those, those people around them. And personally, I think that's a good message for us as well. I mean, we don't own slaves. Um, we, most of us, don't own oxen and donkeys and stuff like that. But I think this is a reminder to treat people well. You know, traditionally, Sunday has been a, a huge day in which church-going folk go out to eat. I know a lot of you will, will go out to eat after this service is over. People go out to eat for breakfast or brunch after the first service. Many times we, we go out to eat on Sunday, but did you know in the food services in, in the food service industry, church going folk are known to be terrible tippers. That when you look at, at a, wait, a waiter or waitress and you look at the tips that they receive all week long, their, their lowest tips are on Sunday. I mean, it's well known we're bad tippers. And believe me, they know where you've come from when you go in there with your nice clothes on. And people, this just should not be. I mean, we should be graceful and gracious in our giving. Especially on the Sabbath, especially on Sunday when we go out to eat. I mean, think about all that God has given to you. Think about the grace and the mercy and the love that God's given to you. And when you go out and, and your service is lousy, tip them more. <laughs> tip them more. Because guess what? God gave you his son when you were still a sinner. When you were still far from him. When you had turned your back on him. When, when you were li living a lousy life, that's when God loved you the most. So, so when you go out to eat, tip well. Represent Christ well. Treat other people well. It says it in the Bible on the Sabbath day. Treat others well. One reason we treat people well is, you, you know, you're never quite sure of the story that they bring and where, and where they're at in that moment. I'll never forget a story I heard about a pastor. He went, him, him and his family went out to eat after church. 
And the service was terrible. I mean, terrible. So bad that he did something he almost never did, and that was go and talk to the manager at the restaurant. So he's, he's explaining to the manager how terrible his service was, and the manager said to him, he said, you know, it doesn't surprise me. And I actually tried to convince her not to come in today because I knew she wouldn't be able to do her job. But just this past week, her husband died unexpectedly. And when I tried to convince her not to come into work, what she told me was that she depended on this job for money, that the funeral costs were expensive, that she had a lot of debt, she was having a hard time making ends meet, and that she needed to work today for herself and for her child. You, you, you never know the story of your server, of your waiter, of your waitress. Just this past week, we had our uh, hot water heater go out. And so we ordered a new one. And the guy who, who brought it by to install it, I, I just started talking with him a little bit. I asked him how long he'd been working for this company, and he told me he'd been working for them for about a couple years, for about two years. And we talked a little more, and, and come to find out, he had actually retired at one point in his life. He had retired. But he came back to work for this company because his mother has Alzheimer's. And he looked at a lot of nursing facilities. And the one that he wanted to send his mother to required him to go back to work. So that's, that's why he was working. That's why he was at my house installing my hot water heater. Because of his mother who has Alzheimer's. And I, you know, I was going to tip him anyway, but I, I think I gave him a little extra money after hearing, after hearing his story. But we all have a story. And we all need to receive grace and love and mercy, regardless of who we are. So if you're going out to eat today, I mean, people know where you've been. <laughs> people know who you follow. Be gracious to them. Tip well. Maybe even get to know, get to know their story. And, while they, and why they are waiting on you this day. Another reason why we keep the Sabbath, we, uh, we keep it not only to treat others well, but we keep it to treat ourselves well. And by this, I don't necessarily mean, you know, we sit in front of the TV all day in our, in our lazy boy or, or on our couch eating uh, Ben and Jerry's or Hagen dazs or your favorite pizza, you know. Although all of us need days like that every now and then, right? But uh, it shouldn't be every Sabbath day. I mean, that's not necessarily the point of treating yourself well. In Deuteronomy 5.15, it tells us, Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. So again, why do we, what's another reason why we keep the Sabbath day? To remember how God has saved us from captivity. To remember how God has saved us from enslavement. And no, none of us have experienced or will experience what the Israelites experienced by being slaves to Pharaoh. But there are a lot, of, a lot of things we become enslaved to. It might not be Pharaoh, but, but I'm telling you, it, it's easy to become a slave to work. It's easy to become a slave to the cravings of your body. It's easy to become a slave to your cell phone. It's easy to become a slave to, to what other people think about you. No, we are not slaves to Pharaoh, but there are a whole bunch of other things that we become slaves to. In John 8, 34, it, it even tells us that we become slaves to sin when we go our own way rather than God's way. And the good news is that as Christians, Christ has set us free. That just as, G, just as God set the Israelites free from Pharaoh, Jesus Christ has set us free from sin and from all of these other temptations in the world. John 8, 6 says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And so the Sabbath day, one, it reminds us to celebrate that we are free. 
It reminds us to celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ died on a cross to save us from sin and death. But the other thing it does is the Sabbath day recharges, recharges our spiritual batteries so that this coming week you can face those temptations, you can face those sins, and, and that you can be victorious over them because of what you have done on this Sabbath day, of how you have recharged your batteries, of how you have invited Christ into your life, of how you have sung his praises, and of how you have prayed to him and given back to him. This is a day in which we can recharge our batteries so that we can be victorious over sin. So that we can be victorious over those, over those temptations that come into our lives. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. And the Sabbath helps us in that process. Because I'm telling you what, if, if you spend an entire life being a slave to sin, Usually, it, it isn't taken away overnight. <laughs> Usually, it's a journey. And upon that journey, the Sabbath day is that day that recharges your batteries so that you can win the battle. There's one other thing about the Sabbath day I, I want to mention. One other way in which we can keep the Sabbath day, and that is as, as followers of Jesus, as believers in Jesus Christ, as people who believe that on Pentecost Sunday, God spent his holy... God sent his Holy Spirit to dwell within us. That as believers in Jesus, as people with the Holy Spirit, then you know the Sabbath day shouldn't, shouldn't just be contained to one day. Our week, our week should be made up of Sabbath moments. We should be able to find Sabbath moments throughout the week where we stop what we're doing, where we stop what we're doing and we appreciate what God is doing in our lives. Maybe... Maybe it's at the sight of a, a beautiful sunset or a gorgeous sunrise. Maybe it's when the, the rainbow comes out after a storm. When those things happen, I, I just want to invite you to take a Sabbath moment to appreciate them and to give God thanks for what God has done for you. Maybe it's at your workplace. Maybe at your workplace or at, at school, you need to take Sabbath moments throughout the day. So you'll take a Sabbath moment and, and pray for your coworkers, or pray for your teachers, or, or pray for your fellow students. Take Sabbath moments throughout the week. My wife and I, we have a friend, um, she used to, when she used to drive to work, she would, she would pass three trees on her way to work. Beautiful, strong, healthy trees. And every, every morning as she drove to work, she saw these three trees. And what she got into the habit of doing was that when she saw these three trees, she started to pray for her three sons. And so every, every moment she took this, this Sabbath time where she, she um, escaped just from the busyness of, of what that day was going to bring just to pray for her sons. And this morning, I, I just want to give you permission. Because sometimes we have to have permission. I just want to give you permission, okay? I want to give you permission to slow down. I want to give you permission to, to slow down so that you can taste if you're going out for lunch today or when you're with, with your family. Slow down so that you can taste. So that you can see. So that you can experience the goodness of our Heavenly Father. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work He had been doing, so on the seventh day, He rested from all His work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it He rested from all the work of creating that He had done. Don't forget to rest. To step back and appreciate all that God has done for you. Would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, beautiful day you've given to us, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you that when we were still sinners, you showed us grace. When we were still sinners, you sent your son to die on a cross. 
And we just pray that, that we as a people, we might not be exploitive, that we might show that same generosity to others. But God, I pray that we might um, treat ourselves well. And by that, I, I mean we, we leave at the, the foot of the cross those things, those sins, those burdens that weigh us down, that we can be free of those things, and that the Sabbath day will help us overcome those things throughout the week. But God, I pray that we may set a certain time aside, and devote it to you. I pray that we might have Sabbath moments throughout the week in which we stop what we're doing. Take a step back and truly be thankful for this creation, for our family, for our friends, for a job, for the sacrifice of Jesus. God, make us into, into Sabbath people so that we might always, always appreciate your love and grace. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Would you please stand with me as we join together in our closing song? Mm-hmm.